Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Ethan Mitchell and today I'm going to show you how I create HDR content for YouTube using Final Cut Pro. So for the past few years there has been a buzz about HDR video. Netflix, Apple TV, Disney Plus, and even YouTube have HDR content. And the exciting thing is, many new mobile devices can display HDR content. There is a lot of information to get into, so we're going to break this up into four sections. First, we're going to talk about what is HDR and why it's a big deal. Then we'll quickly go over mobile devices that can display HDR content. Next, we'll talk about cameras and settings for HDR. And finally, we'll go into Final Cut Pro and I'll show you my process for setting up HDR projects for YouTube. So let's get started. What is HDR? HDR stands for High Dynamic Range, which means you'll get a much wider range of luminance and color in your video. There are many different flavors of HDR video. Just to name a few, there's HDR10, HLG, PQ and Dolby Vision. So how does this differ from standard dynamic range? Standard dynamic range consists of luminance values from 0 to 100 nits and 8-bit color depth. This provides 256 colors per channel. This color space is called Rec. 709. This is what the majority of cameras and displays currently use. That's cell phones, action cameras, drones, and most DSLRs. And yes, the marketed HDR setting that's in your cell phone, drone, and action camera is still standard dynamic range. They use a type of bracketing that blends an over and underexposed image to increase the dynamic range. It's a clever way to get more dynamic range out of a sensor, but it's still 8-bit color that caps out at 100 nits. HDR consists of luminance values from 0 to 10,000 nits, though many displays can't get that bright yet they're getting much brighter than the 100 nit cap of standard dynamic range. Currently, many new televisions and cell phones are capable of reaching over 1000 nits, which allows for a much wider luminance range to be displayed. Now, the other advantage of HDR is color. HDR has a bit depth of 10 bits or higher, which allows for 1024 colors per channel, which is a vast improvement over 8 bit. This color space is called Rec 2020 or Rec 2100. This is a color chart of all the colors your eye can see, and this triangle represents all the colors of Rec. 709. Now if we take a look at HDR, Rec. 2020, you can see that we get a much larger range of color. This combined with the higher brightness gives HDR video a very realistic and dramatic viewing experience. I personally feel this is a bigger deal than 6K or even 4K because your eyes are more sensitive to luminance and color than resolution. Now let's talk about mobile devices that can display HDR content from YouTube. There is a link in the description that will take you to a list of Android devices that are YouTube HDR ready. This list is constantly growing and most new mobile devices are HDR compatible. For iOS, at the time of recording this video, iPhones 10, 10s, 11 Pro, and 11 Pro Max can display HDR content from YouTube. On your mobile device, you will open YouTube, and when playing an HDR video, you will see in the settings, the resolution, followed by HDR. This tells you that the video you're watching is playing on your device in HDR. In the description, there is a few links to HDR content if you want to check your device. Now let's talk about cameras that can record video that can be edited into HDR. Theoretically, any camera that can record 10-bit color or higher in log, HLG, PQ, or RAW is capable of HDR. Some can record 10-bit internal or some may need an external recorder, but there are several cameras that can do this. So let's go over camera settings. First, you want to be in an HDR format, so HLG, PQ, log, or RAW. Next, we want to make sure we're using the histogram. The most important part of shooting for HDR is to not overexpose the image. The higher nit value will make clipped highlights very dominant when you color grade and there is not much you can do to fix it. So super important, don't overexpose the image. So let's jump over to the computer. Historically, HDR has been a challenge to edit. Many desktop editors like DaVinci, Premiere, and Final Cut have been able to edit HDR for some time, but the challenge lied in how to view the content you need an HDR reference monitor that can get up to 10,000 nits and be able to display 10-bit color. You also needed your computer to output the HDR signal so your monitor would display it correctly. 
If not, the video that you exported would look nothing like what you color graded on the computer. Well, now we have a way around that. Final Cut has a tone mapping feature, which makes footage recorded in HDR viewable on your SDR display. And using scopes, we can make a very accurate, educated guess and make the footage appear how we want it to look. Now for professional use, I would still recommend using a high-end HDR monitor, such as the Apple Pro Display XDR, but for YouTube, this works just fine. Before we get started, we're gonna make some changes to the display settings so your color grade will be the most accurate. Okay, first what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into System Preferences, and then we're gonna click on Displays. If Automatically Adjust Brightness is clicked on, you wanna check that off, and we're gonna turn the brightness all the way up. Next, we're gonna go into Color, and we're gonna click Calibrate. Next, we're gonna click Continue, and then here we're gonna set the white point. By default, the MacBook Pro is either set on D65 or it's used native white point, which I like to set my own white point. So what I, I actually slide this up and down till the white areas on the computer are true white. And for this monitor I've done in the past is right at 7,000. Then we're gonna click continue and then continue again. And then you're gonna label it, you're gonna name it here. Now let's move into Final Cut. Okay, first we're gonna create a new library. Now with the library selected, we're gonna go over to the inspector and click modify. Here, we're gonna click wide gamut HDR, click change. And now we can create a new project. Now, if we go into the color space for our new project, we can see not only do we have rec 709, but now we have all the HDR settings. We have rec 2020, rec 2020 PQ, and rec 2020 HLG. YouTube recognizes PQ and HLG, but I found PQ works the best. Um, we're gonna keep our 4K resolution and our frame rate the same as that, okay? Okay, now let's import some media. And uh, since we deal mostly with drones here, we're going to bring in some clips from the Mavic 2 Pro. And we're also gonna bring in this clip. This is shot on the GH5. And uh, this is some fireworks over the 4th of July. This was shot on the Fujifilm X-T4 in HLG. Okay, now that we have our clips imported, I'm gonna bring them into the timeline and trim them up and I'll see you when we're done. Okay, before we get started, we need to convert all of our clips to the proper format. Because we're in a PQ project, we need to change the color space of all of our clips to PQ. And to do that, with the clip highlighted, we're going to go up to the inspector under the eye icon, and then we're going to come down to where it says Color Space Override. Click on that, and we're going to change it to PQ. If you don't see the setting, go under Settings, click Settings, and that should give you that option. Okay, so now I'm going to go through and convert all of the clips over to PQ. Okay, let's start the color grade process and start with color correction. First, we're gonna bring up the uh, color scopes and the shortcut for that is Command-7. And first thing we're gonna look at is we wanna be in the waveform, in the luminous waveform. If you're not there, we're gonna click on View. I like to use one square, but you can use as many as you want. And we're gonna click on the scope icon. We're gonna click, have it on waveform and luminance. Also gonna make sure our values is in nits. Now on the luminance waveform, we can see that our luminance goes from zero to 10,000 nits. And when we start to adjust the luminance, we want to stay around 1,000. You can go higher, but most HDR mobile devices can only display 1,000 nits. So if your footage goes higher, your highlights will be blown out on those devices. So it's good practice to stay around 1,000 nits. On the shadows, I like to keep them around one. One big takeaway is the highlights are gonna be much brighter and your shadows are gonna be much darker when viewed in HDR. So it's really important to go easy on the contrast. Okay, now I'm gonna go through, make all these color corrections and then I'll see you when we're done.
Okay, now I'm done making all the color and luminance adjustments, we're gonna make one more final correction. We're gonna do a tint adjustment over the entire clip. When HDR clips are uploaded from YouTube, they have a slight shift to green. So we're gonna add a magenta shift to compensate. We're gonna add an adjustment layer over the entire clip, and we're gonna set the tint to eight. Okay, now we're ready to export. Technically, we should plug in a whole bunch of numbers for metadata, but we're not gonna do that. I found with my setup, it's not really made a difference if I put in metadata or not. So just to keep things simple, we're gonna leave it out. So when we go to export, YouTube will recognize HDR content that's in HEVC or ProRes Codex. You will also notice these files are much larger than the H.264, so I do recommend using HEVC when possible. Your video will also upload and process much faster when using HEVC, but it takes Final Cut much longer to export. You will also need Apple Compressor to get the HEVC options in Final Cut. Once your video is exported, upload to YouTube as normal and you're good to go. YouTube will take care of the rest. It will take some time to process before your video is available in HDR, so just be aware of that. If you did everything correctly, when you go to view your clip on YouTube, you should see the HDR label next to the resolution. So there it is guys, HDR content for YouTube using Final Cut Pro. I'm really excited to be able to upload HDR content to YouTube, and I really feel this is gonna be the norm in the future. It really does make your content look lifelike and just amazing. If you have any questions or anything you'd like to add, please feel free to comment below. As always, thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.